Greetings and welcome to LGR Oddware, where we're taking a look at hardware and software that is odd, forgotten, and obsolete. I've got a question for you. Have you ever looked through your DOS games and just thought, man, I really hate the keyboard and mouse or even a controller? You know what? Screw that. I want to play my DOS games with my mind. Well, you can do that. Thanks to the magic and technology of the Mind Drive, the first computer product operated by human thought. Yes, this is real, and apparently it's fun for the whole family, so uh, let's hope it's fun for the entire YouTube audience as well. Ah yes, squigglies in your brain equals squigglies on your computer via your finger. This is indeed the Mind Drive, brought to you by a company calling themselves the Other 90% Technologies. It's always a good sign when something that is supposedly based on science uses a well-known scientific fallacy, uh, an urban myth misattributed to Albert Einstein and a bunch of other people. Use only your thoughts to move images, run computer programs, and even play video games. Astonishingly simple. So frickin' simple that it probably doesn't work. <laughs> so this thing was released in 1997. Well, maybe late 1996, but definitely by 97, and cost $149 in the US. And uh, you could actually get all of these extra pieces of software to play with it. This will not just play with anything. You do need other software that's made specifically by the other 90% or whoever else that is compatible with this and uh, these things cost 25 or 40 dollars each now supposedly the whole idea behind this is that the little sensor for the finger measures galvanic skin responses or gsr this is like temperature and heart rate and electrical impulses and it's supposedly similar to programs developed by the pentagon and nasa for doing things like training pilots as well as other brain computer interfaces for controlling things like prosthetics and wheelchairs and other stuff like that for people that are disabled in one way or another now, whether or not this actually holds true to any of that GSR reading, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't even know. Uh, we're just going to have to see once we try it out. Now, this thing was released with some restrictions. Uh, they were actually trying to get this thing to read very specific thoughts. Well, not really read, but detect specific thoughts. Like, they were having some sort of thing where uh, you could think a word and it would have a, a vocabulary that it knew and you would also be able to write using this thing. But that never happened. This thing can only detect direction and intensity of a direction. And you'll see what I mean once we actually try this thing out. And according to some of the contemporary articles that I was reading and other hoopla with the press, there was a lot of people just like kind of blown away and skeptical, obviously, as I was, that this thing would actually become something cool. But apparently Disney was on board because their Miramax studio actually planned to make mind-controlled movies with this. So you would go to a movie and you would wear one of these mind drives and everybody in the theater would be thinking left or right. Like if a character in a horror movie or something was wanting to go left or right and it would change the outcome of the movie. Yeah, that never happened either. But you'll note that lofty promises as opposed to actual results. That's a recurring theme with this thing. So inside the box, you get everything just sort of packaged into this neat little cardboard uh, packaging. That's appropriate, I suppose. But let's just take a look at each of these things and see what $150 got you back in 1997. Well, first up, we get the software that it comes with, which is uh, quite handy because otherwise this thing is completely worthless. Uh, it comes with the tutorial software as well as some testing stuff on here called Thought Waves, uh, Mind Doodle, which is actually a few different things. Uh, Mind Skier is a skiing game <laughs> controlled by thought as well as mind bowling. You know, there's a lot of mind things. Uh, I guess they didn't mind. You also get some registration stuff as well as ads for uh, more of their products that you could buy from them just in case you were so impressed with this thing that you wanted so much more. Uh, and this thing does actually hook up through the serial port. So if you have like RS-232 or whatever else, and uh, this is an adapter for the couple different kinds of serial that were common at the time, plugs straight into one of the COM ports there. And then it also comes with this. This is the Mind Drive Micro Console, as they call it. So you have the, uh, the power source. It actually plugs into the wall. 
Um, there's a RJ11 like phone line type of thing here. And the manual actually says, don't plug your phone into this. But uh, yeah, this, this plugs into uh, one of the devices and a power button and some other things over here, which you use to plug in all of this. <laughs> it's not the most elegant solution in the world, but it works. It's science, who cares? Yeah, so we just plug that in right there. RJ11 right there. AC adapter here, so basically this plugs into the wall, of course. This will plug into the serial port on your computer, and this slips onto one of your fingers. Also got the user's manual, which is uh, pretty informative and actually pretty entertaining. Uh, Ron Gordon, the president of other 90% technologies, really had some high lofty ambitions. <laughs> Our history as human beings on the planet has been a history of continually using and developing our minds to enhance our civilizations, science, and cultures. But yeah, he just goes on about, oh man, we've been limited by our arms and legs and words, and now we're only limited by our mind. It's a continuing journey, and the most exciting thing of the advancement of the human mind, blah, blah, blah. It's basically just telling you how to set this thing up, as well as uh, some tips for adjusting the thing <laughs> if it doesn't work. I love this too. Like, why is the performance varying? The reason is simple. You! It's your fault, not the product. And so lastly, the finger sensor is where most of the action happens. Really, really simple. You just stick a finger that fits into there and it starts detecting that whole uh, GSR thing, or at least that is the idea. No, that's not gunshot residue, but <laughs> yeah, maybe you can detect that too. This thing is pretty much magic. But uh, yeah, it's actually really cheap, comes apart super easily. And uh, underneath you have all of this wonderful little bits of integrated circuitry and whatnot. Uh, yeah, It's just this little gold sensor that uh, when you touch these two contacts, it detects that there's something there, and then tries to read your signals, and in turn, your mind. <laughs> At least, that is the idea. Whether or not this is actually successful in doing that, well, let's just go ahead and give it a look. You know, hooking myself up to all this equipment makes me feel like some sort of messed up science experiment, and <laughs> that kind of makes sense, considering that Ron Gordon, the ex-president of Atari from the 70s and the founder of this company said the technology for the mind drive was originally developed during the Cold War by former U.S. government scientists working on secret mind control projects in Siberia. Which is pretty outrageous, but then again it's also well known that everyone at Atari in the mid-70s were on a crap load of drugs. Alright, so once the thing is installed, the mind drive adjusts to your brain waves. Once it has done this, you can use this Thought Waves program to sort of get used to the whole idea of controlling things with your mind. There's this little worm and you try to feed it through these openings and these gates. But honestly, I find it very difficult to determine if I'm actually making a difference or if the wormy thing just does wormy things on its own and sort of makes me feel like I'm actually controlling it with my mind. In fact, turning around and not looking at the screen at all, not thinking about left or right thoughts or whatever it wants me to do, and it still plays just about as well as I was doing when I was trying, quote unquote. And yeah, that's what you do. It, it tells you to think with your left and right brain, so it's like, think left, think right, think up, think down, or whichever. It, it's only binary, it can only do two at a time, so there's a mode for left and right, and there's a mode for up and down. You can adjust the thought wave sensitivity in the options, but putting it near the bottom just gets no results whatsoever, and then putting it near the middle or anywhere beyond makes it just go all over the place even when I'm not trying anything. I thought maybe another finger would help. I was doing it on my index finger on my left hand. The manual says to try another hand with the middle fingers. I figured why not the most middle of middle fingers. And well, what do you know? I once again cannot tell a difference, and it's just kind of doing whatever it wants to. I thought, hey, why restrict myself to fingers? I got other phalanges and whatnot, so I stuck it on my toe, and yeah, it pretty much the same result. Just made it harder to stand up, and I felt like a flamingo, but whatever. Maybe a little extra capacitance will help, so I tried it with my tongue. After cleaning it, of course, since my toe was just in there. 
And uh, this actually seemed to work a tiny little bit. I felt like I was more or less controlling it sometimes. It was just gross. It just didn't taste very good whatsoever. And why stop there? Why should humans have all the fun? So I got this cherry tomato straight out of the refrigerator and stuck it in there and... <laughs> well, what do you know? Once it adjusted to it, uh, it did just fine. In fact, it did maybe even better than I was doing with my fingers. So, uh, you know, I don't know what the mind drive is detecting, but it sure as heck ain't brain waves. Unless I've got a very evolved tomato. In that case, I should probably call National Geographic. And since that one's so spectacularly average, I uh, figured I should try some of the other games like Mind Bowling. It's a bowling game. You should play with your mind. Super simple. All you control here is the ball going left and right, and you press spacebar to actually bowl the ball. Once again, it takes some adjustment, but actually, this had me feeling like I was controlling the bowling ball with my mind. Seriously, I would think left, 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 and the ball would start to curve left down the lane, or very much right down the lane if I was thinking right. And if I just sort of thought neutrally, it would stay in the middle. I'm not making it up. It actually sort of started to work. A little bit. But then the other 75% of the time, it was just all over the place and I had no idea what was even going on. Because again, I would look away or something and it just felt like the ball would go towards the direction that I would like it to go in order to get a better shot. It really does feel like these games are just pandering to you. Like it's just being, eh, okay, you know you want it to go that way, so I'm gonna make it go that way. Because after all, if a tomato can play this, what the frick does that say about me? Next up is Mind Skier. And there are way too many race events than necessary in this game, but whatever. I just played the slalom because slalom is a good word. Once again, you press spacebar to begin, and you can press the up and down arrows to adjust your speed. Otherwise, it's the same binary movement, left and right. And, ah, oh man, this made Winter Race 3D seem like a masterpiece. Seriously, it was all over the place. I adjusted the sensitivity. It didn't really matter. This is a complete friggin' waste of time and just a mess. Maybe my brain was getting fried after a while. In fact, the manual said something about that too. But then again, according to the manual, you can just exist wrong. And it will cause a fault with the device. And somehow that's you being the problem. And can you imagine if something like this actually had caught on though? There'd be people sitting around playing games like this. I'm pretty sure I've witnessed some kind of similar scene in a dystopian fiction of some kind. People just sitting around motionless, playing things with their mind and being slightly appeased. This is a sad, sad thing. I'm glad this was not the future. And last up is Mind Doodle. You got Mind Sketch, Mind Patterns, Mind Critters, Mind Travel the World, Mind Travel USA, and Mind Comp. Ha, <laughs> no you don't, but anyway, these are all little mini games that aren't really games at all. The first three are all the same. Basically, it's just like kid picks or paint or something, but you do it with your mind, sort of. Again, because it only does left or right or up and down, you actually have to choose with the mouse what you want to do. So it kind of negates the majority of the entire point of this device, since you don't control it with your mind, but the mouse, you choose your color and brush and then point at the direction that you want the cursor to move with these little arrows at the bottom. Then you click and move the rest of the cursor either left or right or up and down and hope that it does something. And of course, it never did. Not with Mind Sketch, Mind Patterns, Mind Critters. They're all the same freaking thing. Just one is with drawings, one is with patterns, one is with animal patterns. The fact that you have multiple controls to work out, one of which is your friggin' brain just not working because this thing sucks, yeah, that makes this real intuitive. And then there's the mind travel the world in the USA, and these, it gives you several locations, and you have to do the exact same thing with a drawing, except that you're moving around some sort of vehicle trying to collect all of these locations. So it is video gaming's most awkward and clunky and messed up quiz show that you've ever seen. And that's it. There were a bunch of other programs, but I cannot imagine paying the $25 to $40 or whatever it was. Yeah, that's it for the mind drive for now. Ugh, man, what a disappointment. 
I was really hoping to play at least one game with my mind halfway competently, but <laughs> I guess that's what I get for believing in magic. Oh, man, whatever. I guess the uh, inner ten-year-old that just wants these kinds of things to exist is still there, and I can't help it, but whatever. Uh, I appreciate you sticking around for my look into yet more oddware. And if you would like to see even more Oddware episodes, I have done quite a few of them. One of them is showing right here, as well as one of my reviews. I do videos like this every single week, oftentimes more than one a week, so subscribing would be beneficial to you if you enjoyed anything you saw here. Lots more is coming. And you can always interact a little bit more with me and other viewers on Twitter and Facebook as well as sign up on Patreon if you would like to support the show even more, as well as get some perks like being able to view episodes earlier than anywhere else. And as always, you are controlling my mind to tell you thank you for watching.